Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce my second speaker of the day. He is known as a third old settlement, Frank Bergeri. I have known Frank a number of years. Our connection go back to the days of, a work, of working for a bank that was quite impressive. Frank would occasionally pop in and out of his apartment, causing great unrest, but it became apparent that we knew each other. It wasn't deemed possible I should know a higher rank in management, and I never did let on how we knew each other. If only they knew we shared a good bottle of whiskey on the top table at a bunny supper. Both of us having done our time, we got out for good behaviour. Frank lives in the coastal resort of Sunny Bones. With his wife, he has two sons, and like their dad, supports two mediocre football teams. Hibernian and Bones United. And this two mediocre. <laughs> Scotland too, of course, and I wish the team all the best for tonight. He's heavily involved with the Blue Ace community and his vice chair of Luton Park Association and the Blue Ace Fair. But I love to support major local events like the Riding of the Marches. Yay! He enjoys a good malt as well as a good bottle of bread. His dream job would be quality controller for either libation. Ladies and gentlemen, to propose the toast to the Royal Borough of Lundergo, please give the best of order to Mr. Frank McGarry. Oh, 
Carl Spock, Julia Lundling, and other novels that look considerable. I use this word most days, and I've already witnessed a few of your misses. I've yet to see one single bike on these pages. And suddenly, you now have a female promise. Let's just say to them, stood up, I hope your, success, your speech is a success. And it got me thinking, because success means different things to different people. For example, if you're two year old, success is going a whole day without being your pants. <laughs> if you're 17, success is having a driving license. If you're 25, success is having a good looking girlfriend and getting plenty of sex. If you're 40, Success is having a good job and making plenty of money. If you're 55, success is having a good looking girlfriend and getting plenty of sex. <laughs> if you're 70, success is having a driving license. <laughs> and if you're like Hector 82, success is going a whole day with good in your car. <laughs> It's not just on Marxist Day that the logo word is like the slag bonnet. Bruce Jennison regularly has a wee go at the logo read band Christmas Carol concert. <laughs> but I've got a new hobby, ladies and gentlemen. It's watching my wedding video backwards. I love the bit where I rip the ring off a finger. Bugger off back up the hill, jump in a taxi and go back to the pub. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be extremely nervous, so we boy for boy is coming and speaking at such a minor event as all of the matches. <laughs> and I was lying in bed this morning, thinking about going home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I turned to the white sister. <laughs> <laughs> I said, so I'm really nervous about this. She says, Frank, start the song, profound. So I headed off in the train to Glasgow first thing this morning, into the Mitchell Library. I went right up to the receptionist and I said to her, Robert Burns, the complete works. And she said, I'm very sorry, Mr. Burns, this is a library. The sauna is next door. So as I came out, the Mitchell Library, they're standing outside with Cinderella, Tom Thumb and Quasimodo. And they're having quite an animated discussion. And then goes Cinderella, and she comes out two minutes later, highly delighted. She says, Cinderella, Guinness Book of Records, I'm the most beautiful girl in all the world. And then goes Tom Tom, and he's out two minutes later, he's also highly delighted. Tom Tom, Guinness Book of Records, smallest man in the world. And then goes Quasimodo, he wants to be the ugliest man in the world, and he comes out two minutes later, Rome and Green. Fucking kid. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm into some names. I'm into some names and I carry a book about them. It's all about names. I'm really into them. And I looked up kids on the bus on the way down here tonight, or this afternoon. And kid, kid there it is. It comes from the Norse. And it means pretty, intelligent, and bright. Alan, not very. <laughs> but you're glad to know that Edlin, as an Edlin kid, means gorgeous. Oh, wow. oh, How many actual black bitches are there here today? Put your hands up if you're an actual black bitch. No many. No many, that's surprising. Edlin's a black bitch. She has not much to do with the Lillardville Gallery of the year. And I'll speak to her later on, and I'm glad that you're looking so well, darling. Thank you. <laughs> Let's mention that we work for the Royal Bank together for many years. I've now got a new job working as a funeral servant, something I've been doing for around eight years now. The son of my dad died about four months ago. I decided to go to go and see Bobby Benny, who's my one of my friends and who I do my work for. And we the talk things over. And he says, Did you get any special requests, Frank? I say, yes, Bobby. I said, all my working life, my dad, all my dad's working life, he wore a black suit. He wants to wear a blue suit to be buried in. So after the funeral, I went back to Bobby and I said, I want to my duty. 
This is not unkind. This is not. This is just a chance the next day a boy came in and he's more a blue suit or he's working light and he wanted to wear a black suit. All I had to do was change the heat. <laughs> it's a true story. It's a true story. <laughs> but let me get back to Liz. I think it's, brave. it's a brave move to have a lady chorus. The mother of the experience. Women come in three distinct categories. There is the sexy. There is the intelligent. And then there is the vast majority. <laughs> I was going out with my wife. We've been out for about four months, and I'll be honest with you, I wasn't getting the return on my investment that I was expecting. <laughs> and I was sitting in a pub with my good friend, Charlie Hunter, and I mentioned to him, he says, take out the black room, it always works. So I approached her and I said, do you want to go to black room for the weekend? And she agreed. She says, but I only go in if you buy me a tough coat. Well, I had the money. So I went to the local pet shop, I bought a hundred hamsters, I killed them, I took a pelts off and I made a coat out of the pelts and I gave it to her, she was highly delighted. The next Tuesday I'm back in Newtown Bar with Charlie Hunter. He says, how did you get on? He says, I see if I couldn't get her off the big wheel. Now the good news for you ladies and gentlemen, I was told to keep my speech to 10 minutes so we can catch up with the, uh, with, with the agenda. So I'm going, to finish, I'm going to finish with two stories. The first story is I worked in Hart Hill in the Royal Bank of Scotland and one of my jobs was going up to the local school and talking about opening savings accounts and thinking about the future. And just as I was getting into the classroom, the teacher was finishing a lesson off in progress. So she turned to the class, she says, before Mr. McGarry takes so over, you can end it now and give me a story of a program attached. All the hands goes up, and she picks a wee boy and he says, I'll stay in a farmhouse. My dad was out collecting the eggs yesterday morning on his way back to the farmhouse. He's fell, he's stripped on top of the basket, and he's broke all the eggs. She says, that's a good story, what's the program there? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. She says, right. Anything else? Be girl. I was running home from school last night, and I saw a fellow, I tripped, I ripped my jeans. As soon as I get in, my mum's taking my jeans off, she's got a patch in them as good as me. She says, what's the problem there? A stitch in the pine, says then. And a wee boy up the back said, during the second world war, my uncle Peter was defending a bridge over the river Seine. He just finished his second bottle of whiskey. But suddenly, the bridge he was defending was attacked by five panda divisions, six Luftwaffe, and a thousand infantry. And single-handedly, with the 85 machine guns and two grenades, my uncle Peter successfully defended that bridge. She said, that's a marvellous story. What's the problem there? You don't have Uncle Peter when he's got a big gun. Talking about Bill, and it coincided with the papal visit to Scotland of John Paul II. And he's on his way from Glasgow to Edinburgh in the Pope Mobile. And a cavalcade of journalists and press and media at the back end. And they're all in all, they're all near eight, and he suddenly sees the sign for Hart Hill. And he taps his driver on the shoulder and he says, We have got Hart Hill. The driver says, oh. <laughs> But being the top man, he, he gets his way. So the first thing they come in is the Hart Hill, Hart Hill Village Hostel. Nobody's expecting him. And he goes, Straight out of the ward, and the sister's right at his side. And being the Pope, he lifts his hands and he does this. What is wrong with the man in the bed? The sister says he was in the local pub last night, the flying thunder. <laughs> Somebody broke a bottle off the bar, stabbed him in the eye, blended him, and he'll never see again. The Pope lifts his hand as Pope's doing, he says, Open your eyes. The boy opened his eyes. Sight was so America. So he goes to the next bed and his folks do and lifts his hands and they say, What is wrong with the man in this bed? <laughs> Sister says he was out committing burglary last night. He fell from a second story flat onto his back. He broke his back. He'll never walk again. And the folk being the folk lifts his hands and they say, 